Here's another video to help us practice doing unit conversions. In this video, we're going to practice converting multiple units at the same time. So this is going to be quite a bit more challenging than the videos that we've already done. However, our strategy is going to be the same. We're going to be starting by writing the number that is given to us. And the number that's given to us has two units in it. This is 2.70 grams per milliliter. Now, in order to make this a little bit easier for us to work with, we're going to write this as a like a real looking fraction, grams per milliliter, just like that. So we're going to be putting the milliliter unit clearly on the bottom of the fraction, which we know that's how that's what's implied with this notation right here. But we're going to be setting it up really clearly like that. Now, for some students, some students are pretty uncomfortable about having just a unit on the bottom of the fraction with no number. So if that's you, if you really feel like there needs to be a number there, you can put a one there because, of course, putting a one there doesn't do anything mathematically. So we need to, just like normal, we need to multiply by a conversion factor. And in this situation, we are trying to convert a couple of units in this problem. So we're needing to convert the gram unit into the kilogram unit. And let's just go ahead and start with that. So for now, we're going to be ignoring this milliliter situation. We're just going to be focusing on converting the grams. So we know that because we have gram unit up here, we want to, in our conversion factor, we want to put the unit of grams down on the bottom so that they will cancel out. And we want our desired unit up top top and our desired unit is the kilogram. Now how do I know that I'm converting from grams into kilograms? There's two ways that I know this. First of all, the top of the fraction continues to be the top of the fraction. So whatever I have on the top fraction of my starting number and the top fraction of my final number, those are the two units that I'm trying to convert. The other way that I know is that this is a mass unit and this is also a mass unit. So I'm just converting from one mass unit to another. This is a metric to metric conversion. So we're gonna take a look at our metric prefixes. Kilo is the prefix for 10 to the 3, so that means 1 kilo is 10 to the 3 grams, and this will cancel out our gram units and get into kilograms, which is exactly what we want. So that part of the conversion is done. Now let's focus on the milliliter part. So now we need another conversion factor, and this time we want to cancel out the units of milliliters. We want to cancel out the units of milliliters, which means we do not want to put the milliliter unit down here on the bottom because we want these two units to be on opposite sides of their fraction so that they can cancel each other out. If the milliliter unit is starting on the bottom, in our conversion factor, it needs to be up on top. So we don't want it down here. We want it up here again, so that these two units are on opposite sides of the fraction and then they can cancel out. Now we're trying to convert from milliliters into centiliters and we've seen quite a few examples. So we already know that it's a faster process, requires less thinking on our part. If we convert from milliliters into liters, and then in our next conversion factor, we'll convert from liters into centiliters. And again, we want these undesired units to be on opposite sides of their fractions so that they can cancel. Let's fill these in with our prefixes, uh, or let's look at the prefixes and fill these conversion factors in with their correct numbers. Milli is the prefix for 10 to the minus three. One milli is 10 to the minus three. Centi is the prefix for 10 to the minus 2. 1 centi is 10 to the minus 2. And let's double check that our units are canceling. So we have milliliters canceling and we have liters canceling and we're going to end up with units of kilograms over centiliters right there, just like we want. So this is also one that we ought to be able to do the math in our head without any difficulty because we're just dealing with exponents of 10. But let's, because I haven't done this in a while, let's get the calculator out and practice entering in exponential notation because that is something that we always need lots of practice with. So we're gonna start with the 2.7 
right there, 2.70. And then the next step here, we are dividing by 10 to the third. Now, when we're putting these into our calculator, we want to think about these as 1 times 10 to the third, 1 times 10 to the minus 3, 1 times 10 to the minus 2. So we're going to divide by 10 to the 3, divided by 1 EE3. And remember that the EE button or EXP button represents times 10 to the. So we're entering 1 EE3. And then in the next step, we're going to divide again, this time dividing by 1 times 10 to the minus 3. So now we need to divide by 1 EE minus 3. Now in our next step, we multiply by 10 to the minus 2. So times 1 EE minus 2. And we get 0 0.027. How many sig figs can we have in this answer? We have 1, 2, 3 sig figs in our starting number. We have infinite sig figs in all of our conversion factors because they're metric to metric. So the calculator is telling us that the answer is 0 0.027 but that is only two sig figs. In order to give this a third sig fig, we just have to put a zero on the end. And our units of this are kilograms per centiliter. Let's check out the next one. The next one, pretty similar. We're starting with 2.70 grams per milliliter. So we have two units that we wanna cancel out. We'll go ahead and put a one here just in case anybody's uncomfortable. And let's go ahead and start with our gram unit. So we're trying to get rid of the gram unit so that we want that on opposite sides of our conversion factor. And we're trying to convert from grams into pounds. So this is a US to metric conversion, which means that we need to consult a table of US to metric conversion factors. So I've got our math is fun conversion factors ready for us. This is a mass conversion. Um, and it looks like right here at the very top of the screen, I've got it scrolled just right. 1000 grams is 2.2046 pounds. So I'll copy that in. 1000 grams is 2.2046 pounds. And in that step, we will have done the conversion from gram to pounds. That'll get rid of the gram unit. So now let's focus on the next part of the conversion. We have milliliters that we're trying to get rid of. So since this unit is down on the bottom of our original number, we want it up top in our conversion. We want it up here. And we're trying to go from milliliters into gallons. So we want gallons down here. This is a volume conversion. So let's find our volumes on this table. And we're looking for milliliters and gallons. And it looks like right there at the top, I can see it says one gallon, 231 cubic inches. And that is equal to 3.7854 liters. One gallon is 3.7854 liters, not milliliters. But that's okay because we know that we can convert from liters into milliliters. So let's take care of that conversion. We do not want liters, so we want that down on the bottom so that the liter units are on opposite sides. Convert from liters into milliliters. Milla is the prefix for 10 to the minus 3. That means 1 milli is 10 to the minus 3 of anything. Let's take a look at how we did with our units. The liters will cancel. The milliliters will cancel. cancel. We're ending with pounds per gallon, so that works out being perfect. Let's get the calculator out and let's do the math on this. So we have, we're starting with 2.7. And then in our next step, we are multiplying by 2.20416 and dividing by 1000. 
In our next step, we're multiplying by 3.7854. And then in our last step, we are dividing by 1 times 10 to the minus 3. And we end up with 22.53 something. How many sig figs are we allowed to have in our answer? In our starting number, we have a total of three sig figs. One, two, three. This being a US to metric. We're focusing not on the 1,000, but on this part. This is one, two, three, four, five sig, sig figs. Uh, here's another US to metric. We're not going to look at the one. We're looking at one, two, three, four, five. So there's another five sig figs. In this last step, this is metric to metric. So this is an infinite number of sig figs. So our smallest number of sig figs is three. That means that's how many sig figs we can have in our answer. So our answer will be 22.5. The units are pounds per gallon.